Hi, this is Jared from Shunome. Um, next week, well, next week as of, as of me recording this, I'm going to be one of the speakers at uh, Archi Summit 2021. So it's going to be uh, the second week of January 2021. Um, it's an awesome event put on by BIM6X, the same guys who organized ArchiCAD by the Beach in uh, 2019 and 2018. Gosh, it's so, so long ago. Anyways, uh, those guys are awesome Archicad experts and they do wonderful events. Uh, as I was saying, I'm one of the speakers next week and I'll be talking about the art of misusing Archicad. Well, I put together my presentation and I created way too much content. So as a teaser for what I'm going to be speaking, at, speaking about next week and as just a way to share more cool Archicad tricks, I thought I would take some of that unused content, make a quick YouTube video. So let's get started. Uh, first off, let's look at this ceiling here in this living room. You'll notice uh, there's a faint uh, line here. That's, that's a slab. And this slab is on um, my operator's hidden layer. So it's usually you can't see it. And the building material is structural void. What that is, um, is a basically an airspace um, building material with a very strong uh, in intersection priority. That makes it cut through things like the wall. We hide that beam. So you can see it's cutting through the wall. If I delete this, the wall comes back. So it's cutting through the wall but it's less strong than the beam. So what it allows me to do is carve out cavities. Um, so here, if we just drag this forward, you see over here, we're carving out that wall. It's a great way um, to add an invisible space to um, you know clean up your model and section. Uh, so let me turn that off. So that's one technique. You can use a similar technique if instead of uh, that being um, a void, it's say insulation, and I don't know if I have it set up in this file to be strong enough, but uh, wood frame insulation, uh, and then I got to change the layer so it's not set to um, be uh, wireframe. Okay, so I brought that down. So you can see, and now I change this to insulation. It's the same concept here. Um, that, let me make this wall, uh, you, you can see that the beams here are stronger than the insulation, so the beams are cutting the insulation, but if I come back here, you can see that the insulation is still stronger than the, um, than the wall, sorry, I'm just putting on this on proper layer, so you can see insulation cuts the wall, beams cut the insulation, so uh, some cool modeling tricks there. Okay, what else do we have to show here? Other thing, oh, let me go back. There we go. I got a lot of models in here for the presentation, so the orbit is a little funky. Um, okay, the other thing I want to show here is this blanked out window. I came across a situation on a project where there was a window that existed, but had just been blanked over. So there's two things to do here with that. Um, it's a very obscure example, but you could imagine other times where you want a window that looks like a window but is not really a window. So the first thing is I did is I changed the uh, surface from um, glass to white, so you can see, uh, you know, that's the that's been white. So that is pretty straightforward. It makes it look clear like that. But if we go into plan, or actually let's go back to 3D, how do we get that, right? There's the window, there's nothing. What's going on there is I put a thin half inch thick piece of drywall over there and just covered it up. Um, I turned off the, um, the trim, so there's no trim. If we turned on trim, we would see that through the wall. We don't want that, so we just turn off the trim, cover with drywall. But there's still a little bit more we have to deal with. 
because here it is in plan. What if we don't want to see it in plan, just so we don't confuse people? Well, we've got the drywall there, and that's covering up that hole. But we can go a step farther, go to the settings of the window, go to floor plan and section, 2D detail. Let's just go to off. And now, we don't see the window. Now we see the siding here, but I turned that off in plan, so it's not a big deal. Um, so let's, if we just go ahead and hide that, you can see it looks like there's no window, but on the exterior we'd see the window. So, pretty cool. Okay, um, I'm going to show you guys two more things, I think, then wrap up this video. So let's look at this chimney. Um, this chimney uh, had an interesting detail up top where it was some soldier course bricks. And the easiest way I found to do that was with a complex beam, or sorry, complex column. So we have a three inch brick layer at the top, followed by an eight inch layer below that. And I just made a brick soldier course material that is vertical. And actually, if we look at that material, um, it's actually just the siding white, um, like default texture that you'd use for white horizontal siding. I set it so that the coursing is correct for a brick. And um, I didn't worry about the joints because I'm in this case only ever doing one um, uh, one course. But you can see if we did, let's just bring this next to it. Uh, if I made this soldier course, say, three feet, it would start to look more like siding and less like brick. But for my purposes, that's all I needed. Now underneath this, is a regular wall, or like a group of walls. And the reason why I did that is to get it to look nice and plan. Um, but if we wanted to, uh, we could just as well add another layer of brick. And then let's set this to 12 feet. Um, and it's going to come up rather than down. And so now we have, oh, let's just move it here. So you can see now we have just a quick column that is a chimney. But you'll notice that the brick coursing here is off from here. That's easy to fix. Um, we go to document, creative imaging, align 3D texture, set origin, and let's just pick a corner right there. Um, and you'll see all the, all the textures changed, not just this, but also that one, um, which means in this case it works fine because this Spacing is three brick courses so that aligns and this is just vertical and it's the right width so it all works out But if you had more complicated textures that wouldn't align together, you'd have to do them as separate um, Elements, okay also with the chimney we have these uh, Sloping brick pieces I used to do these with uh, Roofs, but I realized that the column tool is better um, it's easy to uh, you know, lift them up if for some reason, as actually is in this project, um, we get rid of the chimney cap and just cap it, you can put another one there or just say, you know what, it's not uh, one foot one wide, it's two feet wide. It will just go over and then you, you know, delete that and it's going to all look nice. Um, I think that's all I want to. Oh, and then the other thing to point out here. Obviously, this is a solid element operation cutting that brick. And uh, to get all this to work, you got to make sure that this lower part of the wall is separate from this upper part. Um, these parts all, you know, have the same bottom elevation. And then these walls, you know, this one is flat, this one is cut down. Uh, it's a little tricky, but uh, works great, looks really nice. Okay, the last couple of things I'll talk about, I think I said two, but I'm just gonna keep going because I enjoy talking about Archicad. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this fascia is a good example of a uh, multi-segment beam where I have uh, this one that's set to seven and a quarter by one and a half, and then this end piece, which I just messed with in elevation um, that's offset or is, you know, has a different height at the start and the end to get that. So if we select that and edit it, you can see we can uh, you know, mess with 
what that looks like. Um, it's also good to note, see let's exit this out, if we were to select this, um, we could also mess with the, you know, the end. Did I choose the right one? No, nope, choose the wrong side. Yeah, so we could mess with the end slope of that if, if we wanted to. But uh, this is an example of something that before FECAD 23 would have been very hard to do, but now it's pretty straightforward. Um, so it's just going on talking about weird ways to model things. This project had um, a funky front porch, and instead of using the stair tool like I did um, over here, this is actual stair tool with runners and or stringers and, and treads and just turned off the, um, the, the risers to get the appearance of, um, you know, instead of turning on a riser, we turn that off so we get, you know, the nice open stringer. I think the stair tool works great for kind of low res stairs like that. Um, but for this one, I just built it out of a bunch of different slabs. Um, that's how I thought about it when I was measuring it, and it was really easy to um, model that way. Uh, you know, we'll probably never cut through it in sections. It doesn't really matter if it looks like a big concrete blob, and odds are we'll be demoing it in the final project. Um, I'm not going to talk about these columns uh, or this mailbox. Uh, that's in my um, presentation next week at uh, Archie Summit, but I will talk about this. This is the one thing that I talk about at Archie Summit, but I just love it. I want to show it off here too. Um, it is a column with just two different segments repeated a bunch of times, and it makes for a pretty awesome looking rain chain. So yeah, uh, there we are. Uh, hope you learned something. Thanks for listening. And if you have the time and availability, you should definitely check out Arky Summit 2021 uh, next week, which is the last week of January 2021. And if you're watching this after the fact, still check out Arky Summit. Uh, links will be in the description. I'm sure they'll be doing them regularly. Uh, they're great events. Thanks.